Welcome to week five again. This is chapter nine, mental health assessment skills. I'm gonna let you guys read through the learning objectives for this chapter. And I will start with the mental health treatment plan. So diagnoses of mental illness are not as easily identified and defined as physical disorders. Every psychological problem has physical effects and each physical illness has psychological effects. The wise care provider is aware of both. Individuals entering into the mental health care system undergo a comprehensive assessment. Clients are interviewed by several members of the multidisciplinary health care team and the physical and psychological diagnostic testing is performed and data is gathered from various sources. So we have our mental health treatment plan. We have our physician. They provide information regarding a client's physical state and the need for medications. We've got our social workers who assesses the client's family, work, and social interactions. We have our dietitian. We, you know, they're the ones that learn about the client's nutrition status. We have our psychi psychologist and psychiatrist. They explore the client's emotional and cognitive or intellectual functioning. We have our nurses. Uh, they assess how the illness or the disability affects the client's activities of daily living. And then we have our other care providers who contribute information through their observations and interactions with the client and after all of these people you know through the treatment plan they all meet to compare data identify problems and develop the treatment approach so when the team and the client agree on the treatment goals of course of action is planned and medical treatments and medications are combined with psychotherapies behavioral therapies, and other therapeutic actions. Treatment plans are then developed, especially for the individual client. And the therapeutic actions are implemented and the client's progress toward each goal is evaluated. What is the purpose of the mental health treatment plan? It acts as a guide for planning and implementing client care. It serves as a vehicle for monitoring the client's progress and the effectiveness of therapeutic interventions. You know, because interventions are evaluated and revised if needed and includes new information. And then it also serves as a means for communicating and coordinating client care. It this prevents that treatment plan prevents costly duplication of services and provides a focus for all therapeutic activities. It allows client and care providers the opportunity to work together to meet the client's goals. And um, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Health Disorders 4th Edition Text Revision is a tool that is used to facilitate diagnosis and guide clinical practice. Clients are assessed and classified according to five categories or axes. Um, look at Table 9-1 on page 93, and they list those five axes. And then this system helps care providers gain a more complete understanding of each person. It promotes therapeutic interventions based on individual clients. And the diagnosis of mental health problems remain the responsibility of the physician. So nursing therapeutic process designed to support goal-directed care for clients. It serves as an organizational framework for effective care. It consists of five steps, the nursing process, assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervention, and evaluation. 
and it encourages us to focus on the client and develop appropriate and effective care measures. Assessment. What do we do in the assessment? Like I've always told you guys, nurses are nosy. We want to know everything. We collect the data from every possible source. We review medical records. We obtain histories. We make observations. Diagnoses. Data is inserted into related areas and problems are identified. Nursing diagnosis and interventions focus on how clients' problems affect their ability to carry out their activities of daily living. And then with the diagnoses too, each problem is then examined in detail. And of course, then we, comes our planning phase, the expected outcome then are used to monitor the client's progress. We establish short-term and long-term goals. Therapeutic actions or interventions are planned. Then, after we do our planning, we, um, have, we develop the written care intervention. Interventions is when planned actions are implemented. Actions are carried out by all mental health care team members and therapeutic actions guide clients towards their goals. And then evaluation. You know what? We monitor the client's responses. We reassess the goals and the process begins again. So during the evaluation stage, we, you know, look at the effectiveness of the care and determine was the care provided effective in reaching their goals. If not, we reassess and the process begins again. Clients are involved as partners in their care. Caregivers help clients problem solve by involving them in the care planning process. The art of choosing the best course of action must be practiced carefully and let the do no harm principle guide you as you grow. Remember the nursing process serves as a tool for defining and solving client problems, but it is only as effective as a practitioner. The assessment, the gathering, verifying and communicating of information relative to the client. Holistic assessment includes gathering information regarding physical, intellectual, social, cultural, and spiritual aspects of each client. The more complete the picture, the more effective the treatment approaches will be. Data collection. Data is grouped into objective and subjective categories. Objective data refers to information that can be measured and shared. It's gathered through the senses of sight, smell, touch, and hearing. Remember, objective data is information that can be measured and shared. Subjective data relates to the client's perception. The experiences of pain, nausea, and anxiety cannot be measured by anyone other than the individual who is experiencing them. So you want to document, document information descriptively and accurately. Do not include judgments in your documentation and quote as much as possible. So how can we collect our data? We can do interviews. You know, that serves as a starting point for building the therapeutic relationship. A meeting of persons for the purpose of obtaining or exchanging information. It can be formal. It can be informal. Observation techniques. Per process of purposeful looking. But be careful to be objective. Rating skills and inventories. Data gathering tools specifically designed to bring out certain types of information. It is useful for focusing on specific aspects of client problems. 
The assessment process begins with admission and ends only after the client's relationship with the healthcare system has ended. The psychiatric assessment tool focuses on obtaining data about the problems, coping behaviors, and resources of clients. Risk factor assessment, it's required for clients who may pose a risk for violence towards themselves or others. Risk factor assessment helps formulate a nursing diagnosis based on the identification of risk factors that potentially present an immediate threat to the patient. Risk factor assessments are completed by a registered nurse, but all healthcare providers assist by making objective observations. There are five areas of potential risk for harm, which are located on in table 9-4 on page 96, and they are suicide or self-harm, abuse, violence, elopement, and seizures. The health history, effective interviews, success of any client interviews rest on the caregiver's ability to listen objectively. Understand that you have to listen objectively and respond appropriately. Guidelines for an effective interview. Personal values must not cloud your professional judgments. Make no assumption. Take into account the client's cultural and religious values and beliefs. Pay attention to nonverbal communications. Have clearly set goals and monitor your own reactions. But remember, we have to listen objectively and respond appropriately and not let our personal values cloud our professional judgments. The sociocultural assessment concentrates on the cultural, social, and spiritual aspects of an individual. It focuses on six different areas, age, ethnicity, gender, education, income, and belief system. Risk factors and stressors are also defined during the sociocultural assessment. And then we also review each body system and its functioning. Clients are questioned about their general health care. Have they had any past illnesses? Have they had any past um, hospitalizations? And what is their family health history? Questions then focus on the function of each body system. And then also they're questioned regarding their lifestyle and activities of daily living. living. We um, need to assess that aspect too. Physical assessment is performed to discover physical problems that can be treated medically. A complete physical exam is performed by a physician or a nurse practitioner, and it is not needed every day, but nurses need to be alert to changes in a client's condition. Diagnostic studies include standard blood test, urine test, hormone functions test, HIV or TB testing, x-ray, positron emission tomography, and magnetic renaissance imaging electrocardiograms. Also mental status exams. We want to assess their current mental and emotional state. which the mental status exam is a tool for assessing mental health dysfunctions and identifying the causes, causes of clients' problems. It allows care providers to observe and describe a client's behavior in an objective, non-judgmental way. And the mental health exam explores the various areas, general description, what is their appearance like, their speech, motor activity, their interaction during the interview process? What is their emotional state? What is their mood, affect? 
experiences. What is their perceptions in relation to experiences? Their thinking, their thought content, their pro and processes. How do they process what they hear? How do they process what they read? And then sensor sensorium and cognition are levels of consciousness, memory, level of concentration and calculation, information and intelligence, judgment. So the mental health status exam explores those areas, you know, um, so we just need to take that all into consideration. And remember, we need to explore each and every one of those areas. General description, you know, like I said, they're assessed for, you know, their general appearance, their speech, motor activity. And of course, you have to document all these things. Their emotional state. To assess the client's emotional state, the care provider considers the client's mood and effect. Document objective descriptions of the client's behavior. Remember objective. Do not put it in your own words. You know, quote it as much as you can. And descriptions communicate much more information than is conveyed by a single medical term. Experiences. The client's experience, you know, you want to explore their perceptions of their experience because that is the way that they experience the world. The individual's perceptions are often called their frame of reference. And a person's perceptions help to determine their sense of reality. So with like hallucinations, they have perceptions that have no external stimuli. Illusions are alterations in perceptions that have a basis in reality. External stimuli are present but perceived differently. So know the difference between hallucinations and illusion. Their health history. Their thinking. The thought content relates to what an individual is thinking. Clients can experience the following. They can have delusions, obsessions, phobias, preoccupations, amnesia, confabulations, um, depersonalization. That is a feeling of unreality or detachment from oneself or one's environment. This can occur when one is anxious, stressed, or very tired. It's often seen in clients with severe depression and in some forms of schizophrenia. And then there's disturbances in the thought processes that relate to how a person thinks, which include blocking, flight of ideas, loose associations, and preservation. And this is located on table 9-7 on page 100. And then sensorium and cognition. Sensorium is that part of the consciousness that perceives, sorts, and combines information. People with a clear sensorium are oriented to time, place, and person. In this category, patients are assessed for memory, calculation, judgment, education level, and insight. But the mental, I mean, the mental health exam may seem like it's really lengthy in process, but most of it can be done during the health history interview. And then, um, like I said, you know, most of it can be performed during the health history interview and results can be affected by attitudes and